I'd like to again welcome uh, Viv to, this, to the podium to present. <laughs> uh, Viv is a clinical ICU nurse with experience in both general and cardiothoracic ICU settings. She has a postgraduate critical care nursing certificate and degrees in science and education. Before her nursing career, uh, Viv worked as a scientist. She is committed to improving care and treatment. And to this end, she is currently studying a higher degree by research at Joanna Briggs Institute, where she is performing a systematic review into the efficacy and harms of pharmacological treatments for delirium in patients after, in adult patients after cardiac surgery. <laughs> thank you, over to you. Viv, can you just talk into the microphone? Sorry. So okay. it's being recorded. Sorry. The um, so thank you to the organisers for providing me with this opportunity to uh, present my systematic review, um, uh, which you can clearly see is on pharmacological interventions in the treatment of delirium in the post-op cardiac surgical patients. Now, this came about due to frustrations in dealing with delirious patients, um, and I'm sure you've all experienced that two o'clock um, outbreak of, of delirium in your patients. Um, so I really wanted to explore this further. So... Just to set the background, and, and, to, and, and I, know you, I know a lot of you are already familiar with this information, but delirium is defined as an acute alteration in cognition. It fluctuates in nature and it's often reversible. The incidents with post-op cardiac surgical patients that are admitted into the ICU is really high, and this, uh, this uh, ranges um, significantly because of the screening tools that we use the frequency of screening, the training of staff, and the um, identifying of delirium. The significance for the patient is um, cognitive impairment for up to one year following the episode, with up to 35% dying within six months. The risk factors for post-op cardiac patients uh, sorry, for cardiac patients, is an accumulation of the preoperative, the intraoperative, and the uh, postoperative risk factors, which I'm just going to go into briefly. So for the um, pre-op risk factors, our patients are typically the advanced age with hypertension, diabetes, poor ejection fractions. And then when you add in the intraoperative risk factors with the use or, or not use, um, plus or minus uh, bypass, um, they become hypo hypoxic with hypoxemia, um, requiring inotropic support, and then you add in your post-operative risk factors with prolonged ventilations, opioid use, sedations. And then, of course, you add in your ICU environment, and it just exacerbates the situation with delirium. So the aim of this systematic review was to synthesise the best available evidence on effectiveness and harms of the interventions that we use. Um, and it was particularly looking at the duration and the severity and how we reduce that. Um, but as a registered nurse, I was particularly interested in the harms aspect. And because um, as a nurse, we are responsible to know the indications, contraindications, and the adverse effects of all the drugs that we administer. So this was pertinent to me. So the setting for this review was adults over the age of 16 who were admitted into ICU after cardiac surgery any type of surgery, cardiac surgery was, was included and they were needed to be identified as having delirium. The uh, intervention was any pharmacological intervention uh, used to treat the delirium. Regardless of dosage and regardless of frequency, the comparator was any pharmacological um, that was agent that was used to uh, compare against that intervention. And the outcomes, as you can see, there are 11 primary and uh, five secondary outcomes. So this is a quantitative systematic review that has, been in that has been conducted in accordance with JBI methodology. A priori protocol has been developed and published and, and is available for anybody that wants to have a read. 
Uh, and the studies were, well, first of all, we wanted randomised controlled trials because um, they provide, by randomisation, the best form of evidence for effectiveness and harms. Um, and they are a, um, less biased than, than lower level studies. In the absence of RCTs, we were then going to have a look at non-randomised controlled trials and quasi-experimental. And then in the absence of um, non-RCTs and quasis, we were going to have a look at analytical observational. The search strategy was comprehensive. It, looked, uh, it was aimed to find um, both published and unpublished studies. It screened seven different databases. It was a hand searching of a number of journals um, and it took a three step, step approach. The critical appraisal used two validation tool, validated tools. Uh, for effectiveness, I've used the JBI critical appraisal checklist for randomised control trials. And for harms, I've used the McMaster quality assessment scale, otherwise known as McHarm. The data and synthesis, a meta-analysis was not conducted, and this was because of two reasons. First of all, because of the heterogeneity, heterogeneity between the studies, there were too many differences in order to be able to do a meta-analysis. And secondly, because there was only three studies that were included in this um, systematic review. So as you can see, the search identified or, or retrieved over 3,000 studies. There were duplicates that were removed to 326. And then after screening the titles, abstracts, and full text, I was then down to three studies that met the inclusion criteria. A lot of the studies were excluded because they were prevention studies rather than uh, treatment of delirium um, and because the higher level studies were found and they were included regardless of the, the um, quality. So just briefly on the three RCTs that were included, the first one was Artelin, uh, who looked at morphine versus haloperidol, Tagarakis that looked at ondansetron versus haloperidol, and Yapisi that looked at um, dextamethotomidine versus midazolam. Um, so just overall, the characteristics, there was about 205 participants across all three studies. Uh, they were cardiothoracic ICU patients aged between 40 and 80, and the two studies were conducted in Greece, in Turkey, and one in Greece. The screening tools that they used, two studies used CAM ICU and RAS, and Tagarakis used the four-point scale. It's an unvalidated tool, uh, and it was um, devised by Bayender in 2000, which was a precursor to this, to their study. So the results on effectiveness, as you can see, um, the results from the critical appraisal, that there were 72% unclear responses from that and only 28% were yeses. So they were recorded as low methodological quality across all three studies. And this was due to information lacking on the setting up of their um, RCTs. Um, the authors have been contacted to try and address some of those biases, but without um, success. The harm side of things, um, the appraisal uh, showed 91% no responses. Uh, there were two yeses and two unclear. And once again, this was low quality across all three studies. I found that the harms reporting to be superficial and insufficient and instead blanket statements were provided. So when we look at morphine versus haloperidol, um, Artelin provided a, a blanket statement of no serious or adverse effects were observed. However, there was nothing further, there was, there was nothing else reported related to morphine, which as we know as clinicians, it causes hypertension. There is an increased risk of bleeding through the releasing of histamine, which leads to vasodilation. So, but None of that was, was reported. Uh, when, and again, with haloperidol, it is known to cause QT prolongation and arrhythmias, but there was no reference to these harms at all in the study. 
with Tagarakis uh, on Densitron versus Haloperidol once again lacked um, reporting and harms. So on Densitron, according to the uh, Food and Drug Association, can cause confusion and agitation. Um, but none of, there was no report on that at all. There was no mention. Um, and Haloperidol, once again, QT prolongation. And with your PC, uh, who looked at dextamethotomidine versus midazolam, as we all know, dextamethotomidine causes bradycardia and hypotension in about 30 to 40% of those that it's administered to. However, there was no connection or no relation to the harms of that drug and the effect, particularly on a cardiac patient who's so reliant on their output. Um, and midazolam, of course, as we know, uh, can cause confusion and has a high risk of cognitive impairment. The significance to our clinical practice is that no practice recommendations can come from, from these studies um, due to the lacking of information and the poor reporting on, on harms. Um, and I guess the, I, I would just like to, you know, sort of emphasise the caution that needs to be exercised when we are developing our protocols and guidelines that we need to look carefully about um, which studies we're including and that they address both um, benefits and harms of our drugs. So for the critical care nurse... The systematic review has raised awareness of the potential harms of medications that are used to treat delirium, particularly in this cohort of patients that are often unstable in that post-recovery period, um, and that trials need to report both benefits and harms of the drugs that they use. Um, and also, and finally, um, further RCTs are needed that investigate both pharmacological and non-pharmacological treatments in delirium management. I would like to acknowledge the support of my supervisors who've been fantastic. Are there any questions? Thanks, Viv. Is there any questions from the floor? I just would like to hear if we're going to see more studies from your site in this area. Um, I would like to go further with this, um, but I'm not sure. I'd like to finish my master's first, if that's you know, <laughs> and then take it from there. But yeah, I think a lot more work needs to go into this area. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Okay, thanks. Sorry. <laughs> take this as the last question. We're running a little bit behind. Yeah. Thanks, Viv. That was really good. Thank um, you. Just wondering if you were surprised with the lack of information and clarity around um, medical management post-op delirium and cardiac surgery. Yeah, I was. Um, I, I thought there would be a lot more in the way of um, clinical trials on treatment. Um, but when And when I saw the large number um, that came through from, from the screening, um, I could not believe that, that they were predominantly based on prevention. And I think prevention, yes, is really important. But for us as cardiothoracic nurses, um, when you've got that patient in the bed, it's too Well, it's a lot of things are too late by that stage. It's already under sale and we, we're, we're left with... Um, we're faced with dealing with it. So... Um, yeah, I was quite surprised. Mm. Thanks, Viv. <laughs>